Hello everyone, in this tutorial we'll be creating a memory match game in C-Sharp. So here you see we have all our cards labelled from 1 to 6. Then we can choose a card to flip over by entering a number. So let's try entering the number 1. And then we can see that we're beneath for 1 was a letter B. Let's try entering 4 for example. And we can see that card was B. And since we did not have a match, the cards have been flipped back over. Now let's try to get a match. And here you see we have a match. And then once we finish the game, it says congratulations, you win. Let's get started. First of all, let's start off by creating an integer called rows and initializing it to any number you would like. And then an integer called columns and initializing it to a number of your choice. In order for the game to be valid, either the rows value or the columns value must be even. This way there will only be an even amount of cards, meaning that we can create pairs from all of these cards. Then let's create an integer called ASCII star. And this will hold the ASCII value of a letter capital A. Then beneath it, let's create our grid to hold the letters of each card. So we will create a char array of grids and initialize this to a new char. And its size will be row times columns. And let's initialize this array of some values. So for int i and it will loop until the length of our grid array. And here we will assign grid of i. And we will set grid of i to convert dot to char ascii star plus i divided by two. So if we then copy this for loop template and on the inside just use console.write line grid of i, we can have a look at the cards and we will see we have aa, vb, and cc. However, this order would be a little bit too predictable. So let's create a random rand and initialize it to a new random and then using rand.shuffle we will shuffle our grid array and then we can move this for loop down here to see what it looks like after shuffling and when we press play we can see the cards are all in random orders so great now that we've finished creating our cards in a random order we want to create another grid called playing grid which will display numbers from one to the numbers of cards allow the player to choose a number then once the player chooses a number, the card will be flipped over to reveal its letter. Let's create a string array called playing grid. Initialize it also to row times columns. And then using a for loop, we would want to assign our playing grid some values. So here we have playing grid of i will equal to i plus one to string. So if we borrow our loop from up here again, and instead of grid, we use playing grid. We can see that our playing grid contains cards from one, two, three, four, five, six. So great, now let's work on displaying the grid a little more aesthetically. So let's do void print playing grid. And inside we want a for loop that will loop till the number of rows. And then within that, we want another for loop which will print until the number of columns and here we will want to use console.write note that this is console.write and not write line and within this we will want to print playing grid of cos times i plus j appended with a space a pipe symbol and then a space and then Outside of this inner loop and at the end of the outer loop, we just want to have a console.write line to print a blank line in between each row. So let's remove this line and instead change it to print playing grid. And when we play the game, you can see all of our numbers are printed in a 2 by 3 grid. Next, let's move on to the game logic. So here, the game will keep looping until all the cards have been matched. So to keep track of this, we can create an integer called matches, and let's size this to zero, and have a boolean called game one, which will be initialized to false. Then whilst our game is not one, we'll want to print our playing grid, and then ask the user to enter a choice of card to pick. So please select your first card 
and let's retrieve their choice using convert.toint32 console.readline then we'll want to modify our plane grid of index choice 1 minus 1 to grid of choice 1 minus 1 we'll see a little error here which will come up because it will say you cannot convert type char to int so on the end of this we'll append a dot to string and then let's print our plane grid again to see what it looks like so here we have one two three four five six please select your card let's choose one and then we can see here that card one has been revealed to be a now let's ask the player to enter their second card so we'll type please enter your second card we can copy this code here but we have to be careful to rename this to choice two instead within playing grid we want to do playing grid choice two minus one grid choice two minus one and then we'll print it again so let's have a try let's do card one card one is c let's try card two and card two was b after assigning playing grid one of the letters from the card we can end with a console.clear which will clear the console of all its current output then on the second choice here we can do print playing grid and then after displaying the choice here we will want to clear again and we can remove this statement so now we will see please select your first card one and instead of having it written underneath the console just gets refreshed and it changes to b so now let's enter our second card let's do two and it's also b so here we would have a match so let's go back to our code and work on what to do if we have a match or we don't have a match so on the end of our console.clear we want to print the grid again here which will show the two letters chosen so initially you will just see the grid of numbers then on this part you will see the grid with all numbers apart from the first card you've chosen then here you will see the grid with both letters you've chosen and then we want to do an if statement so if grid choice one minus one is equals to grid choice two minus one then we can use a console.write line and say match we want to increment our number of matches else meaning we did not get a match we want to print no match and remove the cards flipped over from the playing grid so we will remove so choice dot two minus one equals choice two dot two string and then playing grid for our choice one minus one we will just equal to choice one dot two string so the elements here will just revert back to the original numbers instead of containing the letters flipped over then at the end we want to have a little delay as this will prevent the grid from being cleared and allow the player to see the value of the second card they flipped over if it is not correct so here we will have a thread dot sleep and we can sleep for one second which is a thousand milliseconds and then we we'll want to clear the console afterwards so let's try playing our game again so we have all our numbers let's let's a card one so we can see the first card was c let's try three and we can see for a second the third card is a and then it turned over both cards that we chosen as it was incorrect let's enter for b we haven't come across b yet so let's just try six and that's c let's try five b and let's try four we have a match and instead of reverting to their original numbers as both the cards have been matched it remains the same so now we'll want to finish off our game logic by after incrementing matches checking if the number of matches equals our numbers of rows times columns divided by two so here we're checking if the number of matches we currently have matches the maximum number of matches we could possibly have and if it does then we will want to set game one equals true so on the end of our while loop let's add a console.write line saying congratulations 
we win and let's try our game again so let's enter one hit one is b two b and luckily we got a match let's try four four is a let's try five and five is c let's try three a let's try four we have another match and we can finish with five and six and we've won the game and with that we've now finished creating our memory match game in c shop below in the description there should be a link to the github page where you can figure the code as always thank you very much for watching this tutorial and i'll see you in the next